We're now going to look at page two of our album. And as you'll see, they do work as a double page. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to video page two now with you. And the next video will be for page three. And I've done it this way to, just so I don't confuse you. And we can do each page at a time. Plus the fact, later on when you finish your album, you can dip in and dip out and redo other pages that you've enjoyed doing. So it just means you haven't got to keep fast forwarding. So we're going to look at page two. And this is the one that's got the big flap over. So lots of space for photographs. And it's also got the big pull out book with more photographs on. So let me pop this to one side. So I can... Uh, see what we're doing so we're going to turn over to the third the next page put the nice thing about it as well is you can pop it back on itself but the first thing I want you to do is to tear three pages out and I want you to do these one at a time I have found with these albums if you tear out more than one at a time they have got a tendency to rip across which you know you have got lots here but I don't like wasting paper so I've got three pages there torn out. So the first thing I want to do is to make my large pockets. So I'm going to take one of the pages and I want to trim this down to 10 inches by 10 and a half inches. So 10 inches down and then do a quarter turn to ten and a half inches okay and then we're going to bring our scoreboard in and I've got the inches side because I do tend to work on my inches so what you're going to do is on the ten inch side so let me work out the 10 inch side that's 10 and a half so on the 10 inch side which is this side I want you to score in quarter and um, half of half an inch so you're just going to score down making sure that's butt right up half an inch and just be careful how you score don't be too aggressive or you will tear your paper then you're going to do a quarter turn so on the ten and a half inch side, I want you to score in half an inch in. And then I want you to do, do exactly the same on the other side. So half an inch again. Okay, so the ten inch side you scored in half an inch and on the ten and a half inch side you got half an inch in on both sides so let's pop that to one side and now I want you to fold over your score lines and then with your bone folder just give them a gentle burnish so we get a nice crisp edge now, if you have been a bit aggressive with your scoring, do not panic because in these albums, as I said, you've got lots of pages. And again, make sure that's straight on. Okay, so that's my foot in. And then with a pair of scissors, what I'm going to do is just cut straight across those corners to my to them. So that's one, two. And then with some red line tape, I'm going to then tape these together. So just take your time with this because your red line tape is very sticky. I 
I would suggest half inch red liner tape. I haven't got half inch here because I've run out of my making these beautiful albums. So I would recommend it personally. Um, but it's not a problem if you haven't. Like I haven't here, so what I'm going to do is put a bead of glue in as well. But I'm going right to the score line so it's stuck all the way across. But if I didn't put any tape on this bit this is going to get in the way then when we put our um, booklet in okay so this is creating now your pocket and by having it folded over it means it will take the booklet that we want okay and it's just giving us a little bit more room to add lots of photographs then what I do with red liner tape can you see it looks red, but if you go in with your bone folder and just give it a little burnish, what happens is the adhesive embeds into your cardstock. So it gets nicely sticky. And this is quite a good top tip because it then helps adhere to your cardstock and it's not going to fall apart in years to come. Okay, so just take your time to do that. So we're not going to stick that down yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is to bring in my chosen piece of card. OK, so this is what I'm going to have for the background of my page. So I'm going to put my pocket to one side for a minute. So this is my chosen piece of card. And you need to cut this 11 inches across and 11 quarter down. So again, be aware of your pattern. So I'm going 11 inches across. So I'm just going to bring that in to the 11 inches. Again, not throwing these strips away. And then a quarter turn and 11 and a quarter across. Okay, so that's the back for my page. Now I haven't torn a page out for this one to stick into the bottom. So if this was something you're wanting to do, put in a normal scrapbook layout, I would tear one of your pages out and stick this onto it. But this time I'm going to go straight into the album because I want to show you the different ways we do this. Now what I'm going to do with this one, just checking my notes, is we're going to gut this. And by gutting this, you can do this directly on this trimmer if you've got one of these. By gutting this, this means we can use the middle piece of this on page three. So you've got the coordination over page two and page three for a double page layout. So I'm just going to gut in at one inch all the way around. So on my trimmer, if I put that up to the one inch mark, and then I've got markings along here, and I'm just going to find my one inch mark. Now I'm going up, and then I turn it again, putting it in at the one inch mark, going down, finding the one inch on my trimmer, cutting across, going the one inch mark, By gutting paper like this, you can make it go a little bit further. That's why with all these pages, you can have the coordination going along because sometimes in paper pads, you only get one, one piece of each of the papers. So it just means you can uh, use that. And then if you haven't quite got the corners, I'm just going to nick those because they're just absolutely fine. That one probably needs a little bit more. So just with my pair of scissors. That's it. Okay, so that's going to be put apart, put aside, sorry, for page three. And then we are going to now ink the edges. So I'm going to bring in my album. So that was page one. So this is going to be page two on this side. 
make sure you've got it all the right way around as well so I'm going to just ink around the edges and that can be stuck on so this time I'm going to ink with either weatherwood or faded jeans whatever preference you've got so I'm just going to go just around those edges it doesn't take a lot at all to do if you haven't got distress inks again just use inks that match up you can use your spectrum um, water reactive inks quick drying inks you can use your archival you can use memento just pick colors that coordinate with the pattern papers that you're using okay last one and you can see the difference if i sort of show you if i fold it like that can you see the difference between inking an edge and not inking an edge so that's why sometimes it is quite nice just to take that just cut look off okay so that's all done put that to one side and now this can be stuck on now when you stick it down do remember which way up your album is and make sure you've got your words around the right way. It doesn't really, on this paper, even though it's very busy, it doesn't overly matter that you've got it all the right way around. I think I'm going to go in with my all-purpose because it allows me that little bit of wiggle room plus the fact it dries clear. If I get anything on my work, I can rub it away, which is another good thing. okay i've got enough on there see like that i've got some on my page if i rub that away see it rubs away with not showing any marks so again just check you've got it the right way around and stick this directly onto your page and you should have a border all the way around and that's why i've done the measurements as they are so you've got a nice black border all the way around and then what you can do is if you just go in with your bone folder that's why this shape bone folder works really well because it just means by giving it a rub with your bone folder you're dispersing the glue so it sticks down evenly now we're going to stick our large pocket on now this is where can you see it just overlaps if i bring that in there can you see it's just the measurements it's just literally a quarter of an inch so it's going to overlap so it's going to give the illusion again of having another matte and layer which it is now a lot of you may be a bit scared of the red line of tape because obviously once it's down it's down all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do angel wings which is where i fold a little bit back and I leave a bit out and I call that angel wings and I'm going to do the same on the corners because it is very sticky and the other thing I wanted to do was just add myself a little bead of white glue because my tape isn't quite wide enough I could have done another row of uh, red line but it's just as easy to do it with your thin nozzle glue these thin nozzle glues are really good well worth having in your crafty stash if you haven't got one great investment okay let's just pop the lid on there so it doesn't dry out my end on that okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on here I'm just going to hover and I'm going to start this end where I haven't taken off the edges so I'm just lining it up and just take your time oh where's my other end gone that's it so just take your time remember you've got about a quarter of an inch 
all the way round, just eyeballing it. I am eyeballing it. So excuse me if my head gets in the way. I'm just making sure it's all level. So it's just hovering over the top at the moment till I'm happy. And I'm going to go down this end because I pulled these back. And I'm going to pull that off. And that just needs to come up a little bit. I've got a bit too keen there, Dawn, so that needs to just come up a little bit. So let's just puff that with your hot air if you've done that. Just to take that off. That's it. That's just needs to come up just a little bit. I've got a bit too keen there. I was looking at the bottom and not the top. But I'm letting the camera roll so you can see that this if this does happen to you, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry that I've pulled the paper off this side because I can re-glue that as well. So let me just let's just get this where I want it to be. And that's better. Make sure that's right at the front there. Yep. Yeah. Mm. That's better. So if you give a quick half, you can work with it quite quickly. Pulling these sides off. One, two, and that's stuck down. Okay, so that is your piece then on the centre there. So that is that. The next thing we're going to do is to take some blue card. This is coordinating. So for the next piece I'm going to do, I'm doing this is out the um, poetic rose so I'm going to take a piece of let me just check my notes um, I'm taking the pale blue and I'm going to cut this down so let me just move my album out of the way a minute to nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches Nine and a half. I've got a dirty mark in it for my fingers, that's not very good. Nine and a half. Okay, so that's my blue cards. And then I'm going to gut this in again to save save some cardstock for photo mats later on. Three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to move it into three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to gut in at three quarters of an inch. This just gives me a bit more of the cardstock to use for photo mats. So it means you don't have to go buying lots of cardstock the same uh, measurement or same colour if you like. So it just cuts down on saving you buying too much of that and I've just got that little piece there I want to do again so I'm just going up that's it so that's gutted that out so so I've got this out and your center piece now should measure eight inches by eight inches and this is the piece we're going to stick onto our page and this piece we're going to pop to one side this is going to be page three so we're going to pop that over there to one side i've got tape on there for some reason right so we're going to stick this directly onto our page so i'm going to bring my album back in making sure i've got it round the right way and you've got your opening of your pocket here so this is going to be stuck on the middle of here so you've got that illusion again with the black going all the way around 
and I'm just going to nick that corner because I can see and that's going to bother me. Right, there we go. But before I stick this down, I'm going to bring in a bit more of that blue. So I'm just going to bring in a piece of this. Can you see how that's just going to match in there? So I'm just going to trim by eye two pieces the same about three quarters of an inch an inch not too precious on that okay so that is off that little strip you had that's why I said don't throw any little strips away you do keep them and I think we're going with a bit of tacky for this so I'm just gonna put a bit of glue on there I'm going to roughly, I'm going to measure it, so that's nine and a half, so I need to go about four and three quarters, I'm going roughly halfway on the edge there, same with this one. And if you just put your ruler across, you can then get it. I hope my head wasn't in camera shot then. You can just bring that across. So it gives the illusion there's a band across, but we've not used a whole piece. All right, and then we're going to stick this down. So the bit I've got my muggy, muddy fingerprint on can go on the back. So I've just got him with the tacky, you could use your purpose, your choice. And again, I'm just going to eyeball that and bring that in at the centre. Just pressing that down, making sure all that glue has dispersed. And then your chosen pattern paper which I have chosen this one to go on there is going to be cut at seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters so let's just bring that in there seven and three quarters Okay, and that is going to go onto there, but before I stick that down, I'm just going to ink my edges. And again, I'm using the um, weathered wood, or you could use faded jeans, but as I said, whatever cardstock you're using you just find an ink that matches okay so that's done and then that can be stuck onto our page so down it goes Okay, so that is your main part of your page done. So if I bring in the book, you will see. Hold that back on itself. So that is the finished one done. So you can put, with this, you can put two six by four photographs, either landscape like I've done, but also um, portrait. So you've got the choice. That's why the measurements work really well. So now let's create the pockets. So this is the pocket now we're going to make. That is going to go inside here. Okay. So I'm just going to move that to one side. So I'm going to bring my paper trimmer in. And we tore out three pieces of black, didn't we, for this page. So if you get your other two pieces of black card... 
you've got two pieces of the black and one of these you need to cut at nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter inches so one is nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter okay you can keep these scraps back because you could use these for die cutting titles and things like that if you wish so that's nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and then you're going to get your other piece and you're going to cut nine and three quarters by nine and a quarter and then you're going to bring your scoreboard in so scoreboard again now you've got one piece that is bigger than the other can you see by half an inch this is the one you now need to score at half an inch oh, I've lost my score at all there we go so half an inch all the way down and then give that a little burnish okay and you can use wet glue or red liner tape then to glue these together and I think I'm going to go in with my tacky glue so I'm just going to put some tacky glue on the edge there Use your red liner tape as well, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I'm just going to use my finger just to smudge that across so I don't get too much leaking out. Okay. And then if you line these up together... So they're both... And then just push your hand down there and just go in with your bone folder and make sure that disperses that glue. And again, just really giving that a good burnish. Now this is where I want you to test then that this is going to fit in your pocket because this is the stage you can then trim if it's not fitting correctly. So this is our page, this is our big booklet, so we're going to fit it into the page, okay. And that's fitting is that all the way in? Not quite. There we go. So that comes over there. All right. So mine is looking okay. If you're worried about it being a bit too snug that little piece there that's uh, bothering me if you're worried about it being a little bit too snug this is the stage just to pop it in your paper trimmer and trim a little bit off the sides okay I think what's happening is where I put wet glue it's got stuck at the bottom of the page so I'm just going to put my ruler in and make sure that's it. That's what that problem was. That's it. Perfect. So I'm happy with that. So for the booklet, do you remember, all I did with the booklet was I actually stuck paper just on the outside because then if people um, 
choose which way around they want to pop it in because on the inside you can just fill this with photographs and your cut aparts that you've got with your collections so I've just cut paper for the outside so I've got my chosen paper let's bring that in and you're going to cut two pieces of this which is that one and that one you're going to cut these at um, you're going to cut these she says at nine inches square so bring out my big arm and my trimmer I've got a big craft desk and it's still never big enough when I start crafting I suspect a lot of you are the same at home so that's going to go nine in fact I'm going to go this way first because I want to use this strip across here so I'm going to go nine down this way so my pattern at the moment is reading across I'm going this way nine inch because I'm going to use this strip on page three but because the paper is quite busy it doesn't really matter and the time you've got all your photographs on there you'd be surprised you don't see if it is round the wrong way so putting those aside for page three that's one and then this one as well these papers are gorgeous I was just drawn to the colours and personally I wouldn't normally go for paper that is this busy but just something about it just drew me to it and I thought I've just got to just got to work with it and normally I'd only use tiny little amounts on a page but I feel with this project you can get away with it because because it is just so different and by the time you add your photographs I haven't matted and layered any of my photographs in this well a couple of them have as you see as we go through but the majority like things on here I haven't matted and layered them I've just corner rounded them and stuck them directly in and that's the beauty of it um, so this is why it works really well this this little class I'm doing here for beginners as well as seasonal crafters you know seasonal crafters will probably take it a step further and you can mat and layer lots more but I just wanted to show you how quickly with few supplies you can bring a great scrapbook album together and that is what it's all about I'm not rounding the corners on these because I'm rounding the corners on the actual photographs but I am inking these edges again with the weathered wood or you could use your faded jeans anything in the blue tones for this page so that is perfect so we can now glue these on so find our right way around so can you see that's given that little border all the way around perfect so I'll just go in with the all purpose this time so around the edge if you can't get um, the Kalal glues any glue wet glue of choice is absolutely fine or if you prefer to use the double sided tape for these you can do it as well the choice is yours I find using double sided tape sometimes it just takes a little bit longer so that's down I'm going to flip this over and put the one on the back but these papers are lovely I mean look at even the back of this they're just gorgeous aren't they But again, I think these black albums lend themselves perfectly to Graphic 45. But don't be put off by the spiral bound albums. They come in craft, in white and in black. But they do make really quick albums that you can put together. You know, if you've had a holiday and you want to put all your photographs that holiday in one album and you've got spare pages, take your spare pages out. It doesn't matter. You know this is the beauty of it you can categorize everything in projects so one particular holiday or do a yearbook you can do it all in one hit and get masses and masses of photographs in so that's going to slide in there let's 
wait for that glue to dry perhaps might be a good idea Dawn. Yeah I might just wait for my glue to dry to pop that in there so let me bring in the finished one to show you. So this is how I've added all the photographs. I've got little stickers down here, again titles. I've When I put my photograph on, I've left spot for journaling as well, which works really well. So that just slides behind there and gives a little bit of interest. You've got your photographs on there as well. More photographs on the back of your big book. Masses of photographs inside you. You can chop them down, put loads in. And that's going to slide in there. So that is page two all finished. So I will see you on the next um, video. This is playing me up now going in here. Oh, I know why that's sticking at the back. I've caught one of those photographs. I'm just going to glue that down a bit. That's going to go in there. And I will see you on the next video for page three. I'm just going to glue this corner.